This weekend, we welcome Claudio Gross from Switzerland to discuss the upcoming Swiss gold referendum. Claudio is a dedicated libertarian who reads Rothbard and Mises, but he's also the managing director of Global Gold, a bullion company specializing in storage of physical precious metals outside the banking system. So he's well positioned to address this weekend's topic. We discuss the uniquely Swiss mindset behind the referendum and how decentralization of political power is part of Swiss DNA the tremendous geopolitical aftershocks that would occur if the referendum passes, including the physical repatriation of gold to Switzerland, and how the Swiss people may be waking up to the sellout of their country by the Swiss National Bank and the IMF. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Mises Weekends. I'm your host, Jeff Dice. And we are joined this weekend from Switzerland by Claudio Gross. Claudio, how are you? Fine. Good to have you on the, on the line, Jeff. Well, of course, we've already told folks in the intro that uh, we wanted to have you on to talk about the upcoming November 30th Swiss referendum on gold. Uh, obviously, Switzerland has a long history of referendum votes, apparently only requires about 100,000 signatures out of a population of 8 million to hold a referendum. Tell us a little bit about the background of this vote and how the referendum came about. You need to know that we were on a, on a kind of gold standard until the end of the 90s, because there in the constitution, we still had, you know, 40% of the, <clears throat> of the money needs to be backed up uh, by physical gold. And then in 2000, uh, you know, the, they changed the constitution. Basically, the politicians were saying, OK, we have to modernize, you know, the, the Swiss constitution. And they sent out, you know, uh, I think you know, 30 pages uh, what they would like to do. And then the people had to decide, I think within three weeks, usually they have more time. Within a very short period of time, they basically had to, to accept it and then to say yes or no for the whole package. And it was not a single world was, was in there that they would like to take out the gold backing. And, you know, that's now 14 years ago. And uh, what we have seen in, in the last 14 years, of course, is, you know, that uh, that the, the power or let's say the, the centralized government in Bern was trying to get more uh, grip, uh, you know, taking away responsibility from our cantons. I mean, you call it in your area, it's, it would be a state. But, you know, we had in Switzerland always a very decentralized political system where the, the cantons and also municipalities or cities, they had, you know, full responsibility when it comes to taxation, schooling system, you know, healthcare and all that stuff. So uh, a very decentralized um, style, how, how the Swiss were, were, were raised. And, you know, what we still have in our genes over the last 800 years is just part of our cultural DNA. And, uh, and now, I mean, um, you know, after the 2000, basically, they decided also to sell 50% of the gold reverse, uh, reserves, almost uh, even, I think, 60% uh, in total, I think, 1,600 tons. And, and now, of course, you had all these stories coming up, you know, Germany is asking for its gold back and so on. So that was then also, you know, the Eurozone trying to get more uh, power when it comes to Switzerland. They have seen that, you know, our bureaucrats were also sympathizing, you know, with with the bureaucrats in, 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 in Brussels and so on. And, uh, and now we packed, you know, even, you know, the Swiss franc to the, to the euro. Not, it's not a real pack, but at least, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a kind of soft pack. So they were saying uh, it needs to be, you know, exchange rate of 1.20. And of course, you know, a lot of people lost um, overnight uh, a lot of money, especially, you know, people, the workers, you know, pension, you know, the, the retired people and so on. And I think all this led to the conclusion that, um, that they were thinking about, you know, the gold reserves, where are they, you know, uh, who has them, uh, and we should go back to uh, a gold uh, fixing. Claudio, do you have any sense as to the popularity of the referendum or whether it's likely to pass? That's a good question. I mean, <clears throat> in general, what we are witnessing is, uh, you know, there is no real debate taking place. Of course, you know, we have the mass media, uh, we have, you know, the politicians and the bureaucrats, uh, we have the central bankers, and of course, they all oppose, uh, the, you know, the referendum, because they just feel that, you know, if that would happen, that they would lose grip and power and so on. So, you know, and still, you know, we have Swiss TV stations, which are government owned, so they not even have a, a conversation or a debate when it comes to the, to the gold standard, or to, to going back uh, to a gold uh, fixing. So that's, 
that's a, that's a real pity. But at the same time, we can also see when I speak to Swiss people on the street, <clears throat> a lot of people, they just realize something is wrong. Uh, something is is going in the in, in the wrong direction, and they also understand that it's yeah literally it's not it's not possible to print you know to print money like crazy because even our SMB our national bank they have increased their balance sheet by five hundred percent you know they went from a hundred billion up to five hundred billion uh, within uh, since two thousand and eight, and so a lot of people they they just see okay this is you know this is um, when you look around European Union you know and the United States. Uh, they just see this is this is something which is really you know fishy, and uh, so I had a lot of people you know approaching me interested in gold and so on. So uh, you know people start thinking at least about gold and they are questioning the actual system. Uh, so I think that's that's the good point. Do you think there are populist anti-elite parallels between this vote and the recent Scottish independence vote? I think that's definitely also part of it. A lot of Swiss people, they just realized that they're losing liberty, uh, you know, uh, inch by inch, all the, even over here in Switzerland, and they don't feel comfortable with that. And uh, so, I mean, some of them, they also realized that, you know, basically a decision against uh, the central bank uh, policy would be also a decision for more liberty and more freedom. And uh, so they, yeah, you know, the government brought up several um, new votings they wanted to push through, and in the past they basically had lost some of them. So that just shows, you know, that the, the distrust is growing among the Swiss people when it comes to politicians. Claudio, does this referendum have anything to do with Swiss resentment of outsiders demanding, for example, an end to Swiss banking secrecy? Yeah, we have a lot of Swiss people, they believe, okay, the banks are, you know, they are really bad. And so therefore, it's important that they also, you know, hand out the information. Uh, right. and, and then, of course, we have on the other side, we also have people which understand that the banking secrecy was there to protect the citizen against an overwhelming state and, you know, to protect their privacy. So there are definitely, you know, several groups uh, fighting. Claudio, I'd like your thoughts on the possible aftershocks that might occur if the referendum is successful. For instance, it would force the Swiss National Bank to demand return of much of its physical gold currently held by the U.S. Fed and other central banks. Well, you know, when it comes to that, I mean, at the moment, I mean, as you know, we only have the information which are provided by our government and the central bank. So and they basically told us that, you know, at the moment, Switzerland owns uh, 1,040 uh, tons of gold. And they were saying 70% are stored in Switzerland and 30% uh, outside of, of uh, Switzerland. Uh, 20% is uh, stored uh, with the central bank in England and 10% with the central bank in Canada. Um, you know, when we when we started, there has also been a document from Philip Hildebrandt, who used to be, you know, the, the president of the, the Swiss National Bank in the past, who had to leave because he was, uh, you know, playing some uh, currency games private, went before they packed the euro to the Swiss franc or the Swiss franc to the euro. And, you know, what, what he was saying in, in that paper basically was that the 1,600 uh, tons, which the Swiss sold since uh, uh, 2000, uh, that most of it was stored outside of Switzerland and the biggest portion, you know, in the United States. So I think at the moment, uh, I personally believe we don't have any reserves, uh, gold reserves left in the States. That that gold has been sold over the last, uh, you know, 10 years. That's that what's the official uh, news is, you know, over here. Also, Claudio, there would be enormous geopolitical consequences if the referendum passes. For instance, the referendum calls for the Swiss central bank to hold about 20% in gold reserves. It currently holds about 7.7% in gold reserves. And from what I've read, it would have to buy about 1,500 tons of physical gold to reach 20%, which represents about half of the world's annual production. So I just wonder how politically feasible this might be, in your view, over the next five years. If Switzerland would accept and would go back to a gold binding, I think it would definitely would have a huge impact, because you know Switzerland still. I mean, we are the, we are still the financial center uh, in, in, on this planet. Um, we still have, I think, twenty six percent of all the um, foreign, uh, how do you say, uh, offshore money is is kept in Switzerland. Uh, and, and now in these days, we know definitely not because of banking secrecy, just because, you know, of the political stability of the fiscal, you know, I mean, we, we don't have a lot of debts, you know, the economy is still running fine. O okay, I mean, they, they exploded, you know, the balance sheet of the SMB. So they basically, the, the, because we had a debt break over here in Switzerland, uh, 
the people were saying, okay, no more debts uh, a few years ago. And so, I mean, and now the central bank basically just printed money. So they were, in a way, you know, making a roundabout about that law. Um, but of course, you know, if Switzerland would return to gold, uh, I mean, and then starting buying uh, physical gold again, that would be a huge sign for the rest of the world. Claudia, what would a yes vote mean for the Swiss franc? Would it increase the value or benefit the Swiss franc? In the long run, I'm f- I fully... I fully believe a yes would be the best which can happen to Switzerland. Uh, but of course, you know, I mean, I I don't believe, you know, in force. I don't believe you should force people into gold. Uh, so there is always, you know, in, uh, even in a democracy, you always, you know, 51% basically are deciding uh, over the other 49%. Um, and, you know, a lot of people would suffer. I mean, everyone with stats would suffer. You know, we most likely would have a problem in the banking system uh, because we would see, you know, uh, immediately... Uh, it, it's likely that we'll see a deflation uh, in, in, in Switzerland and, you know, that our currency would just go up. And, of course, you know, I mean, I think that's the best because, you know, the currency will appreciate. I mean, even if they, if the Swiss are following now the European Union, I mean, they're trying everything to depreciate the euro. And as soon as this is happening, most likely our national bank is trying to to keep, you know, the 120 but, uh, I mean, when you look at the Swiss franc in the ocean of paper money, it's just, you know, a tiny little point. So one fine day, that's that's gonna, that's not going to work uh, any longer anyway. And then most likely the Swiss franc is uh, anyway shooting up through the roof um, because of that. So, I mean, deflation will be a topic we're going to see in the future anyway. And if we, can, if we can have it right now, maybe we go through a correction phase, one, two years. I believe that will be the best which can happen to Switzerland. But at, at the same time, people then need to understand what are the consequences, you know, that we would have. We have to reduce, you know, uh, our our uh, political system. You know, we need more people in, in, in production and, you know, producing something instead of living off tax money. Uh, we would have to renegotiate, you know, all the salaries because the money uh, is appreciating and the people will be able to buy more with, with a strong currency. So So therefore, I mean, to be, you know, to keep the, the economy floating, you would have to, to change a lot of things. And therefore, people need to understand uh, how important monetary stability is, you know, or even in a, in a gold standard. I mean, the best is, yeah, that, that the money is appreciating over, over the years. And when you put some money on the side, you can be sure that this money will buy you more in the future. But most of the people, they don't understand that because they have been forced into a government, uh, you know, uh, sponsored education system, which is all about John Maynard Keynes and central planning, you know, and centralized stuff like this. So I think if a yes or a no, at the end of the day, I believe it doesn't make, it would make a big difference. But, you know, uh, if, if it will not pass, I'm sure that we have brought up uh, in the minds of a lot of people the right question so that they start questioning the actual system. And, you know, hopefully then a lot of the Swiss people will start to think about, okay, gold, you know, it cannot be, you know, printed uh, like like paper money. So I will start uh, building up my own stock and I will underst- I understand that gold is my it is an instrument to save and that it's also an insurance against, you know, all this crazy money printing and zero interest rate policy around us. Claudio, you mentioned that the Swiss franc is pegged to the euro at 120%. I just wonder if the average Swiss resents having euro inflation in effect imported into Switzerland via this peg. The government and the central banks, they were always saying, hey, we have to do it because we have to protect, you know, our export industry. And if we don't pack, uh, then basically, you know, we're going to have higher unemployment and we're not competitive anymore. So they always come up with the same BS. And of course, you know, people are just, uh, yeah, they, they buy it. They still buy it. Uh, you know, some of them, uh, or maybe even most of them, I really don't know. That will, you know, we're going to see the outcome um, at the end of November. But, uh, you know, I, 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 I still believe a lot of Swiss have realized that we are losing our freedom and our liberty and we are losing our the federalistic structures and that we basically have to go back, you know, to more decentralization uh, and to make sure that we decide certain things. You know, like, like Aristotle, you know, he used to say demos, the village, uh, kratia, you know, the, the rulers. So, I mean, democracy might work, but on a very low scale. As long as people, you know, are just can make only or can only decide about certain things which are really influencing them directly in, you know, the village or maybe in the municipality or in the city or even in the canton in which they are living. And I think that's the message we have to, you know, 
uh, to bring forward. And also that's what I can see is, you know, is going on on, on social media and, you know, in, in certain right-wing uh, or populistic uh, um, uh, newspapers. But this is fascinating, you know, looking at Switzerland from the outside in, unlike the Scottish independence vote, as you mentioned earlier, there's there's not posters everywhere. Uh, there's not a vigorous debate going on in public or in the media. There's not a ton being written about it in, in the U.S. financial media. It seems like there's a lot less buzz about this vote than the Scottish independence vote, even though from my perspective, it could have a much greater sort of geopolitical and financial impact on the world as a whole. Absolutely. No, I fully agree with you. Claudio, let me give you a quote <clears throat> from a recent article by Ron Paul here in the U.S. And I think this quote really encapsulates how a lot of Americans see the Swiss. And I'd like to, to know whether you think it's accurate. Quoting Ron Paul, he says, the Swiss people appreciate the work their forefathers put into building up large gold reserves, a respected currency, and a strong independent banking system. They do not want to see centuries of struggle squandered by a central bank. The results of the November referendum may be a bellwether indicating just how strong popular movements can be in establishing central bank accountability and returning gold to a monetary role. What do you think? Well, I'm sure you know that it, that this quote uh, fits to uh, you know uh, a lot of people in in, in Switzerland, Mo not most likely not to everyone, of course, but. Um, uh, as I said, you know, I mean, we have Switzerland is now 800 years old, uh, roughly, you know, and we always we never had a centralized government. We never had, you know, a one president. I mean, uh, Ron Paul also said once, uh, you know, the good stuff about Switzerland is that no one knows uh, the name of their president because we have seven of these guys, you know, <laughs> they have, they're responsible <laughs> for certain <laughs> portions. And so, I mean, yeah, we, you know, I, that's why I, I still believe, you know, I mean, we had, you know, we had a vote a few few months ago for minimum salary, minimum wages. Then we had a vote for uh, promoting uh, a centralized healthcare insurance company, you know, new system. And the Swiss always said no. So I would not underestimate this, the, the feelings, you know, and you know, the, the uh, they still they still they still have it in their genes. They don't trust centralized government that much, and and we're going to see end of November, you know, uh, how it will be. But Swiss people are always good for a surprise. Well, Claudio, I I can only say that I wish the American people still had the same distrust of centralized government in their genes. But we have to leave it at that. Claudio Grass, thank you very much for a fascinating look into Switzerland, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great weekend.